And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, and subscribing, and be part of the show with sports. about them Cowboys kicking that Washington tail 45 to 3. I know it doesn't mean anything because the Cowboys, of course, you know, they're, they're only paying the, the dreads of the NFL. They can't beat the good teams and everything else. But I will dare say, have you looked at some of the other teams out there? Let's take the Miami Dolphins right now because, you know, unlike the Dolphins, the Cowboys have had that killer schedule that, you know, they just – you know, the Cowboys just have that weak schedule. You know, the Miami Dolphins, well, they, they've shown that they can beat all the great teams. You know, they really have. Because as I look here, as I look here at the Miami Dolphins, um, their schedule, check this out. They have played winning team after winning team every week. They ended up beating the Chargers 36-34. They end up beating that, that juggernaut, New England Patriots, 24-17. They literally destroyed the Denver Broncos 70-20. to Now, I will say the Dolphins are playing a lot better since that ass whipping. But they did lose to the Bills. You know, Bills are, you know, best team in the AFC, 48-20. to They did destroy the New York Giants, 31-16. They killed the Panthers. 42-21, although they did lose to the Eagles, the Eagles 31-17. But they did come back and beat the New England Patriots, although they did lose to the Chiefs. Hmm. But they did beat the Raiders 20-13, to and today they take on another juggernaut, the Jets. So as we go through and condemn the Cowboys and saying, you know, they're only beating tomato cans or they got this easiest schedule in football, um... Miami hasn't beaten a team over 500 either. Just saying, as we put the hierarchy here together. And after yesterday, you know, where we thought that there was the big four, you had the Detroit Lions losing on Thanksgiving at home to the Green Bay Packers. And San Francisco, of course, is peaking right now. They, you know, th those three games that they lost in a row seemed like that was a lifetime ago, just kind of like the game we lost to San Francisco was a lifetime ago. And you have to look at the Cowboys. Their offense is clicking. Their defense is doing well. I know it's not against the best teams in football, but as you go through and you start getting better and better and more and more confidence, that is putting you in the right direction. Of the big three, and I'm going to say that it's San Francisco, Dallas, and the Eagles, the Eagles are kind of like, they're consistent and they're winning. I can't take that away from them. But you don't look at them and saying that they're playing great football. I don't know if it was the Eagles played great at Arrowhead or you look at Kansas City and their problems in the red zone, something that they talked about with the Cowboys, something that Kansas City has a problem with the second half where they've only scored an average of 5.6 points second half of games call it taylor swift wasn't in the house call it whatever you will but kansas city is not playing good football right now and there's a chance that they do not have home field advantage throughout the playoffs like they've had in other years it looks like baltimore may be the class of the afc right now but we have news that jerry jones jerry and um let me pull Forgive me, I've messed up. But uh, the food hangover. I want to read the quote exactly. Um, Jerry Jones has made contact with Sha Shaq Leonard, okay? And he made no bones about it. Now, basically, he says, we've had a conversations with him. He knows that it's going to be competitive uh, for him. Um but the fact that they made a call. Now, here's what we know about the Cowboys, that during uh, the last couple of days of the trade period, they called around trying to find a linebacker. Um, but they said that, you know, they shipped the trees, but no leaves fell down. Um, we know the Eagles are looking for a linebacker as well. Um, 
When asked about Leonard after the Cowboys' 45-10 win over the Washington Commanders, Cowboys owner and general manager said that while he won't give indication on the club's interest level one way or the other, the Cowboys have made contact with Leonard's camp. Contact is made, but I'm sure every team is assuming that if they are in the hunt, they could have interest in him, Jones said. But first, we have some questions that will need to be checked on health-wise. Things uh, like that. I don't right now want to be on that list. I want to do our homework and do what we should do and see if this thing might fit us. We've done no more than that. So, in other words, like they said when Cam Newton was released a couple years ago, that um, the Cowboys will do their due diligence on Cam Newton on bringing him in. Okay, So, due diligence means... Anybody that gets released out there, you're going to look under and say, is this a guy that can help us? Can it fit in our cap? What will it cost us? Um, can he play? All of those things. It doesn't necessarily be that you are all in on him, but um, definitely there's an interest. Now, if you say that you made a call, if you made a call, then, Jerry, you're admitting that there was interest. You don't call about a guy you're not interested in. We think about Bobby Wagner. We think about Von Miller, guys that were saying, I'd like to go there. And you never made a call to them to talk to them. So this is more than what you normally have with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, now, we'll get into the Cowboys and the game and stuff. We've got all day long here. It is Black Friday. And I ain't going out to the shore stores with them crazy people. They're crazy. But what I do want to do this morning, before I go down here, I still have a house full of guests. I'm going to be cooking some bacon, some eggs, some sausage, some waffles, um, some potatoes. We're going to have a big, big country-style breakfast here at the Red Brick House. But I want to hear what they have to say. I want to hear what Dan Orlowski has to say about Dak Prescott. And, you know, I, I find it funny because, you know, they always say that those who can't play coach. Now, Dan Orlowski, he couldn't play. He never in his wildest life ever dreamed of having games in the NFL like Dak Prescott's having right now. So let's see what he has to say today. They had the, they had the plan. So look, I mean, since that 49er loss, which seems like a long time ago now, is there anybody in the league playing quarterback better than Dak Prescott? at the moment. I think it's fair to say he, Dallas is the hottest team in the NFL. Dak Prescott is the hottest quarterback in the NFL and they are the clear cut third best team in the NFC. I mean it, it was a really strong performance again and this is to Graz's point a stretch of four or five straight games where they're clicking and I think offensively the thing that you have to love that's really started to show itself ever since that San Francisco game is they are tying plays together offensively. They, this isn't one of those offenses that just nowadays is just lining up and running plays. They're showing you one thing, and then later on in the game, they're going back to that but doing a different thing, and then later on in the game, going back to that but doing a third option. There's so many counter punches to this offense right now, mm -hmm. and it's absolutely led by Dak Prescott. So this is a very strong performance again by Dallas, and again, solidifying this is the third best team in the NFC. Yeah, I'm going to push back on that. I think they're right there with Philadelphia and when you get past the trade deadline, guys, you say, how can you improve? And on both sides of the ball, the Dallas Cowboys have improved and will continue to. On the defensive side of the ball, Marquis Spell and Deron Bland. Bland's already set an all-time NFL record guy. But when you lose Leighton Vanderish at linebacker <laughs> and you lose Trayvon Diggs and you can replace him with those two players, that's a great sign. And they lost on October 8th by inches to Philadelphia. This defense is better today than when they played them. And then secondly, on offense, guys, Dan, as a former quarterback, you know tight ends are so important. Yeah. Jake Ferguson, Luke Schoomaker, Playing they're good. continuing to get, get better. So to me, mm -hmm. they have answers on this team on both sides of the ball. Hawk, what are you seeing right now with the Cowboys? Yeah, Dak Prescott is playing like the best quarterback in the National Football League. Over the last six weeks, he's 5-1. 70% of his passes are completed, over 1,800 yards, 20 touchdowns to two interceptions. He's played incredible. Now, that stretch has been very advantageous for him as a quarterback. The Chargers secondary, not very good. Eagles secondary, not very good. Giants and Commanders. Both open sesame all season long. But what they're doing offensively <laughs> is Mike McCarthy is trusting Dak Prescott. Earlier this season, it seemed like he was trying to run that new West Coast offense in a way that just mitigated risks and turnovers, and it wasn't the best version of him. 
Dan went on national TV and all but begged them to get CeeDee Lamb involved. And they've done that in a big way. It's no longer Deacon Dunk. They've picked yeah. their spots very much like they picked their celebration points. And now their offense is rolling. Now the biggest test will be down the stretch. They pay five really good teams, winning football teams. And as always, that's how we'll determine how good the Dallas Cowboys are. Yeah, I still believe that Jalen Hurts and Brock Purdy are playing just as good, if not better, than Dak Prescott. And we have evidence against better teams. Let's focus on Dak. The, the gonna, biggest you have a tape, right? You wanna, yeah, the yeah. biggest change, or one of the big changes is, uh, you know, Hawk mentioned getting the ball to CeeDee Lamb is a focal point of their pass game. But we've all talked about the legs and the advancement of that this season. I think the bigger part is not only the legs, but keeping his eyes downfield when he's using his legs. He goes to escape out the left side of his pocket. You see him go two or three times like to go throw, nothing is there. Now second and 10. This is a great job of, okay, I want to go pull the trigger. It's not there. Reset, eyes are downfield. He's not running just to go get three or four yards. It does seem that Dak is back to trying to go create with some of his leg usage. This time Clyde's out the front side of the left of the pocket. Eyes are downfield. This is an explosive pass play. There's not many examples in the NFL of explosive pass plays from like quarterbacks who's going to be creative. Th these two, last two clips are Dak evading the rush, keeping his eyes downfield, and there's 50 plus yards in their pass game right there. So I do love that. Here, here's my whole like pushback to all this. Dallas is the best and Dak is the best. Okay, first of all, there's three teams in the NFL, three that do not have a win versus a team that is a 500 or better record. Three, the Giants, the Bears, the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. You saying you put them on the same page of Philadelphia is four. They have four wins versus teams that have a 500 better record. And Hawk hit on this. Like this last, their last three games, they played the 28th, 31st, and 32nd defenses. I would hope that they would play good football on that stretch. Right. But they, ha they have. And, and they're feeling pretty good. Look, yesterday was a lot of fun in Dallas, right? Dolly Parton's there. Jerry Jones had, had himself a blast. In fact, we want you to hear what he had to say about his team after this game. There's uh, four or five others, at least, that can win one, that can win it two, that are sitting there that some of them we got to play and some of them will go by uh, to get one. Uh, but this team's certainly capable of winning the whole thing. So that's obviously how Jerry feels about it, that he's got a team that's capable of winning the whole thing. But you and Hawk have both made the point that the competition lately hasn't necessarily been the kind that proves that right so my question is like since that san francisco lost when they when they caught fire after that like has dallas actually shown you anything that makes you believe what jerry's saying that they have a real shot at the super 100 percent. and go back to dan's tape a little bit about dak prescott and his movement the other guy we're not talking about is brandon cooks when we go back to what Dallas did, when they moved on from Amari Cooper, they, they kept looking for the Michael Gallups of the world. C.D. Lamb has evolved into a number one, but Brandon Cooks is another guy that can hit a home run. Sure. And that element, when you think about the vulnerability of Philadelphia's secondary, now they went out and got Kevin Byer, that'll make them better. But again, with these tight ends evolving and Brandon Cooks getting the ball a lot more, he's a guy that's over averaging over 13 yards per reception, has four touchdowns, but he's coming. And I think this offense is more explosive than it's been in the last year and a half. Dan, I hate but their they're win, the teams that they've beaten have. They right, beat right, the teams right. that they played. I understand that, but here, I think to answer Graz's question for me, I, I phrase it this way. I know Philadelphia is good. And I know <coughs> San Francisco is good. I think Dallas is. Hawk. I have data and evidence that San Francisco and Philadelphia are both very good teams. I think fit Philadelphia Dallas. beat Dallas by a couple of plays in yeah, Philadelphia. It was, a, it was a close game, and they play again in a couple weeks in Dallas. Hawk, what are you seeing? For, are you seeing anything from Dallas given the schedule? You, you mentioned that the uh, opponents have been advantageous, but are you seeing them do anything that makes you more encouraged than you might have been about them a month, a month and a half ago? For sure, because earlier in the year, I wasn't at the point where I thought Dallas was a good football team. When you watch them against the Arizona Cardinals, an opponent they should be beating like they have beat the last six opponents they've gone against, that was not the case. In the critical moments of the game, Dak was turning the ball over. The offense looked disjointed. It looked like it had no chemistry. It looked like it had no system or game plan. <sighs> I'm kind of in the middle of, of, of Tannenbaum and, and, and Dan because, yes, I agree. I think the Eagles and the 49ers are the best teams bar none in the NFC, but at the same time, I have seen the Cowboys take that step, both offensively and the way that they are beating the opponents in front of them the way that they're supposed to. Well, yes, they have to do that if they're a good team, but they weren't doing it earlier in the season.
What's interesting is when we talk about the Miami Dolphins, we kind of caveat the conversation about the Dolphins saying, yeah, they haven't really beaten anybody. Every time that they've played a team with a winning record, they don't play well. We don't do that with the Cowboys, though. It's like, well, you got you, their, their schedule is what it is. How come it's okay for us to say that about the Miami Dolphins, and it's not okay? The Dallas Cowboys, well, nothing's the changed it, over the last six weeks. That's not true. And, and, yes, it is. They're, they're and, a better team today than they were six weeks ago on both sides of the ball. Because how? Because they're, they're young of, players on both sides of the ball. Are playing. Marquise Bell and Deron Bland are playing as good as who they had to replace. And on the other side of the ball, they have two tight ends that continue to improve. And Brandon Cooks is a guy that go. we all know can take the top My off the coach. Tommy DeVito threw for three touchdowns against this defense last week. Well, I mean, some of that was at the end. When, I mean, they must have back. Can we say that garbage point, time? Right? Like you're not talking about I mean, fourth quarter touchdowns by Tommy DeVito last week, where the game was decided. Right? No, Washington, New York. No, that was like a, a close oh, game. Washington. Sorry, I thought. Yes, no, no, no. Okay, I'm talking you. about first yeah, Washington yeah, yeah. last week. Gotcha. So if Tommy DeVito, yeah, okay. great game by him. On the him, flip side of this, we can't this sit here Washington and say, offense oh, scored 31 twice. What did to that Washington defense? It was another really good performance. Big picture, nothing's changed. They've beaten up on bad teams. They are a very good football team. They are a lot harder to defend, again, because a year ago we're looking for a guy like Michael Gallup to develop, and it was all C.D. Lamb. And now this year it's different. That, what, and like your tape show, what Dak... Xin chào các bạn. Mình đã quay trở lại rồi đây. I don't know. I guess this is a pirated site. Okay, so there you have it. Dan Orlowski. Dan Orlowski, of course, cannot admit that the Cowboys are playing good. It's no surprise. It's no surprise. Haters are going to hate as always. All right, good people. I'm going to go down here and cook some breakfast. And I hope all of you guys are having a great day. I appreciate you. Be safe out there on Black Friday because you know you can get that elbow real quick from somebody trying to get uh, uh, their Black Friday on. All right, good people. Peace. My home team, my loyalty, I'm at Uptown Royalty. We fight for all DC, who are we? I speak facts, facts. I'm not making riddles. The Hawks open big old holes for John Riggles. Chantel is on the team, and you knew that he was smashing. Daryl Green is on the team, and you know nobody faster. Thought you was gonna score, but I knew that he would catch up and Doug Williams was the first black quarterback to win the big dance got three rings when in the big dance when you got Joe Gibbs you got a good chance let me tell you something about some good fans back in the day RFK was star palace if you don't know you need to ask about us think we gonna lose well I can't believe your doubters had the whole crowd screaming out We want Dallas Those haters can't stand us Left hand up Who are we? The Commanders 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 We fight for RDC Who are we? The Commanders